There were no big names in high fashion in the US in the first half of the 20th century. At that time, only Charles James and Maine Botcher were known. The clothing created by cinema designers was also pleasing to the eye, but these designs were not so much influencing the style of American girls. A Ukrainian woman, Valentina Sanina Shleye, who created the American art couture, made a real sensation in the wardrobe of fashionable women of the United States. Her beautifully sewn coats and transforming dresses that perfectly fit to any figure were distinguished by their strict, though unusual, minimalistic design. Her works embodied the luxury of impeccably tailored clothing made from the best materials. They were not constrained by movements, they were well-worn and preserved gloss for decades. The influence of the creative heritage of Valentina Sanina Schleyer in the fashion world of the US is still perceptible to this very day. The active development of the fashion industry in Ukraine started in the early 1990s. Today, two large sites have turned Kyiv into the fashionable capital of southern Eastern Europe, and the names of many Ukrainian designers appear in the official programs of international salons in London, New York, Milan and Paris. Despite this, the pride of modern-day fashion is the bright pages of its past. Slender but with a feminine flexing of the figure and thick hair that was especially knotted into intricate kinks on the backside of the head. A high forehead that is gracefully arched and highly raised eyebrows that are complemented by beautiful large charming eyes. So with a glass of whiskey among the smoke of cigars the gallant Americans gossiped about the designer of clothing designed by Valentina Sanina Schleyer and the rich fashionable women of the US were waiting for haute couture outfits. Not much is known about Valentina's childhood and adolescence. Revolutions and World War I erased many pages of the designer's life. The exact date of her birth is unknown. Most biographies mention May 1, 1904. In some of them her date of birth is 1899 or 1894. But the story of our heroine began in Kiev. It is known that after the October Revolution of 1917 in the Russian Empire she moved to Kharkiv. She graduated from drama courses. She dreamed of playing on a stage since her childhood. The actress was so beautiful. She was heaped with applause and flowers. Sure, she was able to break dozens of hearts of men among who was a pop idol. Alexander Vertinsky is a pop star of the first half of the 20th century. His music works made women cry and men strive to become true gentlemen for their ladies. One day it was the destiny of the singer to meet Valentina Sanina Schleyer. Huge blue eyes with long eyelashes slowly looked at me. A narrow, rare beauty, a hand with long fingers stretched towards me. This woman was very gorgeous. Her head was like in a golden crown. She had slanted cheekbones and beautiful smile. Her look was very similar to that of a fluffy and gore cat. They met in a cabaret in the Kharkiv Art House. The singer devoted romances to his muse. Мне бесконечно жутко. 
только мне так мучительно, так страшно без тебя. In these notes and words, there were not just the simple relations of two creative souls. She obviously could not fall in love. She was a femme fatale, but she took advantage of Vertensky. Of course, she was only a moment in his biography, in his poetry, the singer's daughter Anastasia recalled. But this moment in the biography of the future goddess of American fashion had passed quickly. The singer went on tour to Odessa, and Valentina, like many others who didn't welcome the Soviet occupation of Ukraine, ended up in Crimea. Это все, что от вас осталось, пачка писем и прядь волос. Только сердце немножко сжалось, в нем уже не осталось слез. Ukraine was caught in the throes and fire of the civil war. In 1920, Crimea became the last stronghold of General Wrangel's troops, together with the remnants of the White Army, those who did not accept the dictatorial policy of the Council of People's Commissars under the leadership of Vladimir Lenin left the peninsula. Valentina Sanina also arrived in Sevastopol. There she met her future husband Georgi Schle. He was preparing to leave his homeland and flee from the brutal regime of the Soviet authorities. I was sitting at the train station not knowing where I would go. Then a rather handsome man approached me and asked who I was waiting for. In a matter of a moment, while admiring my beauty, he immediately proposed that I marry him. When exactly the couple got married is unknown, but they left Ukraine together. Greece is the cradle of civilizations, a country that went through incredible ups and downs. Warmed by the sun and lulled by the water of the seas, it gave the world great philosophers, commanders, scientists and inventors. Here an emigrant couple settled not for long. Valentina instantly fell in love with the antiquities of Hellas and started to sew antique-style dresses. Then the couple moved to Italy. There, Sanina tried to act in films, but for unknown reasons, she went to France. In Paris, Valentina joined the troupe of Nikita Baliev, director of the cabaret. At the last moment, she was accepted before a tour in London. Valentina had to learn six acts of the play, learn to dance and perform in musical acts. But the more difficult the task was, the harder she performed to achieve success, and she mastered the role flawlessly. Londoners were so delighted with her performance that the demanding director did not only praise her before the entire troupe, but also doubled her salary after the very first week of her work. Sergei Diaghilev called himself the philanthropist in the European sense. Critics believe that at the beginning of the 20th century, he opened the cultural window to Europe for the Russian Empire. At that time, the entire European audience applauded the opera and ballet presented by the Diaghilev troupe that was appropriately called Russian Seasons. In Paris, Valentina Sanina Schleyer also participated in the place of Diaghilev. The artist and set designer Lev Boxt attended one of the performances. Valentina sued the costumes for this great performance herself. After this, Box suggested to Sanina Schleyer she should try making a career in the world of high fashion. In 1923, the U.S. declared recognition of the government of Mexico. In New York, the Yankees baseball stadium was opened, and in the Amsterdam theater, the audience saw the Charleston dance for the first time. In the same year, the Schleyer couple settled in the U.S. Georgi, who became George in America, had some savings. The funds helped to rent a small apartment and start speculating on the stock exchange. Valentina, like many beautiful immigrant women, tried herself as a fashion model at first. She knew she was beautiful, 
a Ukrainian woman was able to emphasize her beauty with clothing, hairstyle and accessories. This was soon noticed in the high society of New York. The 1920s was the era of the new ideal, the new female image and the new image of beauty. Short haircuts, slim boyish figures with small breasts and narrow hips and straight dresses with a low waist. Valentina, who sewed outfits, appeared in long slinky dresses, emphasizing a thin waist with wide sleeves, a spectacular cleavage and other very unusual details. This all produced a very theatrical effect soon after a small workshop named Valentina appeared. After that, a new shop called Valentina and Sonia was opened. A few years after Sanina arrived in America, the Valentina Dress Salon opened there. It was one of the famous fashion houses in the US at the time. Valentina sued there, and her acquaintances helped her to engage in her business. Her husband, George, became a successful theatrical impresario and continued to engage in financial affairs on Wall Street. The best advertisement of the salon was the creator of the dresses. Having learned that the author of the next amazing dress was Valentina, fine ladies asked to sue the same for them. Every year the number of customers grew. Valentina, in fact, was self-taught. Already having received many orders, in the early 1930s, Sanina Schlee went to Paris. It was exactly there that she learned the basics of design. I learned only one thing – never copy anything. A rework of French brands formed the bulk of clothing in America. I despise the idea of plagiarism. So I will make my own original clothing that will in no way be similar to anything else and will definitely attract the attention of interested buyers. During the World War II, when European fashion houses were closed, she saw the opportunity in the situation on the market. She called buyers and investors to pay attention to designers from the United States, invited colleagues to create a distinctive American style. Valentina was madly in love with black. Also, in her palette of preferences were white, olive, green and yellow colors. Her style was spectacular simplicity. Couturier created luxurious dresses of velvet, chiffon, crepe, muslin. In fact, dresses are masterpieces of tailor art. Nowadays, they are kept in museums and private collections and many stories about them can be found in the memoirs of famous movie stars, artists and poets. In order to simplify the dress, I do a few stitches. I do not need a needle and thread. Just give me three pins and I will make for you a beautiful dress for a ballroom dance. This is not an exaggeration. She could make a spectacular evening jacket from one piece of fabric, fastening it in the right places. Journalists from the most prestigious publications started to write about the Ukrainian. Valentina became the face of many ad campaigns of her own brand, which was not yet common at that time. People knew her face and outfits, but at the same time they knew about her temper. The couturier established her own strict rules and was not in the wake of capricious clients. Actress Kitty Carlisle Hart, ordering her first dress from Sanne Nashleye, asked to add a little glitter or at least a bow to the black dress. Years later, she recalled this moment. She turned to me and shouted, Oh, you want a bow? So go to Macy's department store. I was confused and apologetically murmured that this dress was such a luxury for me for such a high price that I just wanted something special. Then the designer said, Pay for it now, wear it, and then you'll thank me later. Go on, honey. Valentina is busy today. And you know, the truth is that I ended up wearing this beautiful dress for 40 years.
As for the shoes, the women who came to her in shoes with heels weren't serviced. She also didn't like the floral ornament as well. She simply ignored it. She said that this simply distracts from a woman herself. The dress should not hold back any movements. A woman should be able to move freely, stand at a bar, walk and dance. Dresses of Sanya Nashleya were out of time. A woman wearing them today could not be afraid that they would become obsolete tomorrow. Valentina offered clients clothes and accessories for all moments of life. Cut along the sideways, clean lines. In a word, elegant, comfortable and no creepy brushes and bows on the bottoms. Yes, and no high heels. Equated with a century, not a year. Sanina Schleyer paid special attention to hairstyles. At the same time, she acted as a tyrant who knew what to do. Clients tolerated her very silently. After all, they were sure that the models chosen by Valentina would fit perfectly and would be delightful in the public atmosphere. For each client, the designer had a dummy and moreover, she worked with each client, spending all her time and effort to satisfy their needs and desires. Mark Jacobs, Karl Lagerfeld, Eddie Slimmen, Phoebe Philo are the bright masters of modern high fashion. They are not only creators of fashion, they also presented their brand to the general public through the style, behavior and statements. Valentina Sanina Schley was also successful involved in this. She used to say, A Norman is for bathrobes and my salon is a clinic where people are treated for bad taste. Couturier, in fact, was a creative director of the highest level and long before this concept was invented. By 1940s, the fashion house of a Ukrainian emigrant was perhaps the most famous in America. Valentina was admired. The name of the designer had gained fame no less than that of many Hollywood actresses. Sanya Nashle soon met one of these movie stars. Popular American nutritionist Gaylord Hauser took care of the figures of his famous clients. He wanted to emphasize the results of the work in the clothing, so the doctor organized the visits of movie stars to Valentina's salon. On the recommendation of Dr. Hauser, the film diva Greta Garbo also came to sign in Ashleya. They were similar in appearance and soon after that became friends. However, the misfortune came unexpectedly. Garbo met Valentina's husband George. One day, the ladies came to party holding his arm, each wearing dark blue skirts and white blouses. Trinity had fun watching the reaction of the public. Soon, Valentina offered her husband to manage the financial affairs of Greta Garbo. She also did not oppose the trip of the spouse with the actress to Europe. A new relationship between the actress and George lasted for many years. Garbo bought an apartment in the same house where Schley lived, and Valentina made dresses for the Hollywood actress. In 1964, when George and Greta again traveled to Paris, Schley suffered a heart attack. As rumor had it, instead of helping the man, the doctors admired the famous actress and took autographs from her. At this time, George, who was not given medical aid in time, passed away. True or not, Valentina didn't forgive her husband's death. Not forgiven is the fact that the spouse willed almost everything for the beloved and not his wife. Valentina and Garbo continued to live in the same house, but they did not speak with each other. It was rumored that Schley paid concierges so they would keep an eye on where the movie star was going and keep her informed. Valentina didn't want to meet her in the lobby, but one day it happened. Valentina shouted to Greta, Be gone, Satan! Soon the couturier closed the salon. 
She said that she was exhausted and simply wanted to relax. She replenished her collection of paintings and furniture of the 18th century, collected Russian icons and prayed. The Russian painter Sergei Golerbach recalled his meeting with Valentina in the 1960s. At that moment, Valentina came in, a lady of 70 years, in a long dress and with reddish curls around the shoulders. I noticed on the wall a pencil drawing of a young girl. Are you Valentina? Yes, I was very pretty. Valentina Sanina Schleye is considered the first American couturier. All clothes were made only for orders in a small studio. The process was accompanied by a huge number of fittings, discussions and alterations. During the existence of the brand, about 2,000 women have become clients of the salon. Among them are fine ladies and wives of politicians, actresses, Gloria Swenson, Catherine Hepburn, Paulette Goddard, Norma Shearer and Claudette Colbert. She dressed celebrities and she was a celebrity herself. In our time, the figure of Valentina Sanina Schleye is interesting to consider in terms of commercial success. It's no joke to open a business on the eve of the Great Depression and maintain it for almost three decades, critics of high fashion stated. Sanina's outfits were distinguished by a combination of simplicity, comfort and luxury. She introduced Chinese jackets and dresses with Japanese obi belts, turbans and veils, hooded dresses and coats, skirts and cool hats. In the 1940s, Valentina became one of the most fashionable and expensive fashion designers in the United States and the most sought-after fashion designer for Broadway productions. In December 2012, at the auction of Julian's, a sale of items of the star of American cinema Greta Garbo was held. Caps, coats and dresses were sold. On every third item there was a label of Valentina. In short, Sanina Schleye made history as one of the most popular designers in America of the 1930s to 1950s. Incredibly graceful and always impeccably elegant, she served as an excellent advertisement. Aside from paintings by Hals van Dijk and Tiepolo, unique exhibits of the Orient and Oceania, the collection of costumes of Valentina Sanina Schleye is among the famous paintings, armor and ceramics of the Museum of the Metropolitan in the United States. Looking at the models of the eminent Ukrainian woman, you understand that they live outside of time. Gorgeous women still wear dresses that are sued in 1936. They were made with the expectation of a century, so forget what year it is. <laughs>